Hello everyone, welcome to Healthy Hobbit. Today in this video, I am going to talk about Farisi movement. If you like the information that I give you, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So before talking about Farisi movement, let me introduce you to a person. Shoryatullah is quite well known in India and Bangladesh especially. The Palangthana of Madaripur, which is a district in the Dhaka division of Bangladesh, was named Shoryatpur district in the honor of Hazi Shoryatullah. Bangladesh also has a stamp commemorating him and a bridge named Hazi Shoryatullah Bridge. So Shoryatullah was born in Foripur district in Bangladesh at 1781. In the age 18, he performed Hajj, which is, a, which is an Islamic pilgrimage. He studied religious doctrine there in Saudi Arabia. And in 1818, he returned to Bengal from Arabia. And he was the founder and leader of Farisi movement. So let's see how he and why he started the Farisi movement. When Hazi Shiratullah came back to his country, he saw the condition of his country, of his people, and he didn't like it. He saw that for historical reasons, the Muslims of Bengal had been following many indigenous customs, rituals, and ceremonies, which were far from the principles of Islam. For example, saint worshipping or peer. They used to show undue reverence to the peer. They used to make tazia during Mahram. Tazia meaning bloodshed. You see the sharp swords in the picture? They used to cut themselves in it. Whew. Then they used to celebrate numerous parties, celebration during marriage, birth and death. Most Muslims didn't even follow the fundamentals of Islam. He also saw that Muslim peasants were being oppressed by the landlords. Seeing this condition of his people, Hazi Shuratullah vowed to bring the Bengal Muslims to the right and true path of Islam. Hence, he started the religious reform movement called Farisi movement. It was formed in 1818. So the word Farisi was derived from the Arabic word Fars which meant obligatory duties given by Allah. So the followers of this movement or the Pharisees aim at enforcing the obligatory religious duties. They also, you know, uh, prevent or reject the superstitions among the people, among the commoner and any other corruption happened in Islam. This movement was mainly aimed at the depressed peasant of East Bengal. Hazi Shoryatullah gave stress on the justice, social equality, and the universal brotherhood of Muslims. He referred British ruled Indian province as Darul Harab. Here, Darul means system or organization, and Harab means haram, which is. Uh, an Arabic thing which is like prohibited so he started this movement in Dhaka and this movement infused new lives into the lives of Muslims of Bengal and it was spreading extraordinarily rapidly in the districts of Dhaka, Faridpur, Maimanching, Kumilla, Chittagong, Noakhali as well as provinces of Assam but through continuous involvement with Hindu landlords and European indigo planters, the movement gradually developed into political program from a religious movement, of course. In 1840, Shoryatullah died, leaving the reins of rebellions to his son, Muhammad Mushin, who is locally known as Dudumia. Dudumia was an able and politically conscious organizer who completely transformed the movement into socio-economic political program. He divided the Farisi settlement into small units of 300 to 500 families, which were known as halaka, and in every halaka, a khalifa was being appointed. 
and these Khalifas used to make sure that the objectives of the Faraisi movement were being fulfilled by the commoners or the Muslim people. He also mobilized the peasantry around an egalitarian ideology. Egalitarian means uh, being equal. He used to say that every man is equal, every man has the equal rights and so on. And he opposed, he tried to oppose uh, the taxes imposed by the landlords on Muslim peasants for the decoration of the image of Durga and other lords of Hindus. He said that Allah is the owner of the land, so they have no right to collect taxes. The Pharisees ordered their peasant followers not to adhere the ban which was imposed by the landlords on the slaughter of cow, especially on Eid al-Adha. Tudumiya also abstained his men from farming indigo for the planters and for from supporting the British. He, Tudumiya and his followers burned the houses of landlords and they used to capture them and beat them like you can see in the pictures and he was captured several times for violence against some Indians and landlords uh, or and British uh, but they couldn't keep him for long because he was uh, Dudumia was very famous and not and they didn't get any testify against him so he was set free after Dudumia died in 1862 the movement eventually got weak it happened because of the lack of political education among its leaders, anti-Hindu attitudes, forcible induction and exhaustion, and whatnot, every violence that included in this movement. The Muslims, however, were very encouraged by this movement and they were no longer demoralized by the oppression of the Hindu and British. The movement brought spiritual revival which led to a revival in the Islamic religion in East Bengal. It also had important political and economic impact. The Bengal peasants have become united against the harsh treatment they received. They became aware of their rights and political unity began to grow amongst them. So you can say that the Farisi movement was extremely important for the upbringing and awareness of the Muslims, especially the Muslim peasants, of their rights and unity. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. And please do comment if you need any other you know, historical information. Please do comment and stay tuned. Thank you so much.